Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Unit 7, Project Monitoring and Control. This is Lecture B. The objectives for project monitoring and control are to direct project execution, track, review, and report project progress and performance, monitor and control project baselines, manage stakeholder expectations and change requests. One resource that you'll refer to again and again will be your project schedule. The control schedule process monitors the status of the project by determining if the project work has been accomplished and delivered as planned. The project manager measures, compares, and analyzes the actual performance reported by team members against the schedule baseline. If variances are detected and considered significant, you have to decide which corrective or preventive actions to take. Corrective actions may include bringing in more resources, also known as crashing, and doing more work in parallel, which is usually referred to as fast tracking. These techniques may increase project costs and project risks. Preventive actions are recommended changes to the system or process that will prevent future schedule variances. You should issue regular reports to your stakeholders, apprising them of the project status. Your analysis of the project timetable and progress, along with corrective actions, keeps everyone informed and invested in the project. This slide presents a number of activities to help you keep a project on schedule. First, check milestones. When you planned your schedule, you should have inserted milestones or points in time by which specific tasks are to be completed. If your milestones are being met, your schedule should be well on track. Secondly, assess the project deliverables. Are they being completed on time? Is the quality acceptable? And while it may seem obvious, don't forget to talk to your team members. Check in with them regularly through both formal meetings and informal chats. They can help you identify possible issues that can affect your schedule in the future. Do they have to work extra hours to get the tasks completed? How is morale on the team? Are people upbeat and engaged with the work? If you sense that your team is feeling overwhelmed, you may need to reassign duties or redetermine your schedule. Stressed employees make mistakes or sometimes leave your project. Both outcomes affect your project, so take the time to listen to your team members and work out adjustments as needed. Sometimes, despite all your planning, schedules get behind. Two approaches to compressing your project schedule include crashing and fast-tracking. Crashing adds resources to help complete an activity on time. Crashing the schedule will probably result in increased project costs. If you are adding team members, it may even create further delays because current members will have to spend their time bringing the newcomers up to speed. A second compression technique is called fast tracking. Fast tracking overlaps activities that are normally performed in sequence. Typically, the schedule requires activities to complete in sequence because the following activity depends on the one before, so the parallel activities may cause confusion and require occasional rework. Monitoring and controlling extends to the quality of the project's deliverable outcomes. By monitoring and recording the results of all quality activities, you can assess your team's performance and take corrective actions when necessary. Ensure that your team designs quality control into their processes and products so that all specifications are met and that the customer doesn't experience defects and bugs with their deliverable. Checking these things at the end of the project cycle will probably require additional rework, money, and resources. The quality management plan details how quality control should be performed throughout the project. Verify deliverables and make sure they align to the quality standards. Identify causes of poor process or product quality. Recommend and implement preventive and corrective actions. As part of your monitoring duties, you will probably have to provide a regular project report to your customer. This report should include the progress, status, and upcoming activities for your deliverables, detail risks and critical issues, provide updated financial information, 
and recommend action plans or next steps. You will also need to monitor procurements, which includes the various equipment and software and hardware products required to complete your products. Your overall project management plan should include a procurement plan that abides by the process required by the customer healthcare organization. These processes will affect your schedule in different ways. For instance, if it takes six weeks to receive a piece of hardware from a specific vendor, be sure to factor that into your plan. Update any changes to the plan and communicate these updates. If you have the assistance of the organization's contracting office, take advantage of their expertise with contract language and statements of work. Evaluate any proposed changes to the contracts for their potential impact to your project. Establish periodic reporting by the suppliers to keep you informed of their performance, their costs, and any issues that arise. Monitoring and controlling also extends to risk. Track identified risks, identify new risks, implement risk response plans, and evaluate the effectiveness of the risk response actions. Use periodic staff meetings to ask your team to help you identify new risks, review the results of risk audits, and review performance measurements against actual performance. Updating project documents, including your risk management plan and risk register, will allow you to track risk response activities and change requests for preventive and corrective actions. When unexpected problems do arise, such as the abrupt departure of key people, natural disasters, late shipment of needed supplies, or technology failures, you must be prepared to handle them in a systematic way. First, investigate the problem to identify the underlying causes and determine possible workarounds or solutions. If indicated, bring together your project team members to discuss the problem and brainstorm fixes. Determine the impact of the problem and possible solutions on the schedule, cost, and deliverables. Can your project team and resources absorb the effect? Perhaps current staff resources can be reallocated. Also, assess if you need to bring the problem to senior management. Critical problems may require the input of your senior leaders. As you monitor your project, an issues log can help you keep track of problems, both small and large. As you identify issues that arise in meetings with stakeholders, service providers, senior managers, customers, and at project status meetings, include them in the log. Assign each issue an ID number and include the date, description, the planned response, and the person responsible for resolving it. Update the log as the issue is resolved. You may wish to keep your log as a word processing or spreadsheet file. These types of software typically include sorting or other functionality that can be a great help in managing the details of various issues. Even with all of your monitoring and controlling work, your project will change without warning. Team members will leave, a customer wants a faster system response time, a vendor reprices a product. All of these unplanned occurrences will affect your project. So try to expect the unexpected by using an adaptive life cycle model to plan your project. Choosing an adaptive, iterative, or agile model can allow for greater flexibility than a linear project model. Or, you can try to set aside budget reserves or pad your schedule with float days to cushion the effects of delays. When change affects your product, perhaps through a new feature to the system, however, you need to have established change request processes in place. These change request processes do not have to be elaborate, but they do need to be clearly defined procedures for accepting and vetting requests for project alterations. The process will need to determine the impact of a change on project time, schedule, cost, and deliverables, and include a formal procedure to accept or reject it. Or, your customer organization may have such a process in place that you can adapt for your project. Your process may include a project steering team or change control board to evaluate the changes with input from various stakeholders. 
configuration management procedures and tools can help you keep track of versions of requirements, designs, code, tests, and so on. Carefully document all change requests, however minor they may seem. This system will help you remember details or suggestions presented in a casual conversation that may be useful later on. This concludes Project Monitoring and Control. In summary, this process includes a set of diverse activities that impact every aspect of your project from initiation to closure. You will need to build plans for controlling and accepting change into your project plan so that you can maintain your scope, budget, and schedule boundaries. Once a project begins and the initial plans are complete, much of your effort will be dedicated to keeping track of the varied activities and exercising control to implement the plan on time and on budget. But you will also need to be prepared for necessary or unavoidable changes and various tools such as tracking software, issue logs, and established change processes can help you manage these with the least disruption to your project.